Zig is a fast, low-level, general-purpose programming language that is faster than C and wants to replace it. Zig is easier to learn than C++ and Rust because it is small and simple, like C. And like C, it has manual memory management, but it does it in a very different way. The creator of Zig, Andrew Kelly, says that Zig is just C with the glaring problems fixed. Zig has gained recognition lately because it was the main language used to write Bun. Bun is a new JavaScript runtime that according to some benchmarks is faster than Dino and Node.js by big margins, which is in part because it was written in Zig. So today I want to give you a a quick introduction to Zig and show you the features I like the most. Because Zig is a small language, it is easy to fit it in your head, which makes it easier to learn than C++ and Rust. Rust and C++ have tons of features. Zig is simple and minimalistic. Its goal is to have only one obvious way of doing things. It is so minimalistic that it did not have a for loop until some time ago. The only way to loop was using while. Zig has no hidden control flow, which means that no other code apart from the one you see will run. In this Rust code, for example, just by looking at it, you would think that the plus operator is adding B and Z. But because Rust supports overloading, the plus operator may actually be calling a function instead. This is hidden control flow. Code that we can't see will run. We can't be sure that the plus operator does what it looks like it does. Zig does not have this. In Zig, the plus operator will always do what it looks like. It will add numbers. Another example of hidden control flow is this code where you would think that the second function will run after the first. But in languages like C++ that have exceptions, the first function may throw an exception, which means that the second function will not be called, which is something we can't tell just by looking at the code. This is hidden control flow and Zig has none of that. Hello world in Zig looks like this. As you can see, pretty familiar syntax apart from the exclamation mark void. Exclamation mark void is how we tell Zig that this function may return an error or void. More on that soon. Zig has a const keyword to define constants and a var keyword for mutable variables. We can specify the type of constants and variables as we did with A or leave it for the compiler to infer the type as we did with B. To create an array, we first give it a capacity and then the type of its elements. And to loop, we use this cool for loops syntax. Zig does not have classes and objects, but it has structs. And they can also have methods, like here where we are adding the print method to the vec3 struct and calling it later. Zig does not have a garbage collector, so its memory is managed manually. It isn't memory safe like Rust, and it also doesn't use malloc like C and C++. Just like Zig doesn't have hidden control flow, it also does not have hidden memory allocations. That means Zig is not going to allocate memory behind your back. And when you need to allocate memory, it will make you be very intentional and explicit about it. Since Zig does not have malloc like C and C++, when you want to allocate memory, you have to choose which allocator you want and you have to pass the allocator to the piece of code that needs it. If we want to, for example, create a growable list of items, we need to allocate the memory in which we will store those items manually. For this, we first create an allocator. In this case, the most basic one, a heap page allocator. Then we create an array list and we give it the allocator. After that, we can add items to the list and when we are done, we call the init method to release all the allocated memory. There are other allocators to choose from, like a general purpose allocator that prevents double free and use after free, or a fixed buffer allocator that does not make any heap allocations. As you can see, memory allocation is made very explicit and intentional, down to what type of allocator you want. This way of allocating memory also makes it possible to swap allocators depending on the target platform you are building for, or to even create a specialized allocator if needed. Zig treats errors as values, which means that functions return errors rather than throwing exceptions. We know a function may return an error when the return type has an exclamation mark, like this getData function that may return an error or return a response. To call a function that may return an error, we use the try keyword. And to handle the error, we use the catch keyword that we can use to capture the error and do something with it. Using the comp time keyword, we can make Zig run code only at compilation time. Here we have a days to seconds function that we are calling with the comp time keyword. This tells the Zig compiler to run the function at compiled time, which means that the compiler will take this line and replace it with the output of the function at compiled time and not when the program is running in production. Zig comes with a test runner included that makes it very easy to write test. All we do is use the test keyword followed by the name of the test and a block of code with the test assertions. We then run the Zig test command and are good to go. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Clicking the subscription button is free for you, but it helps me a lot. 
let me know in the comments your opinions about Zig, if you have used it or if you would like to learn it. There is lots to like about Zig. I hope it becomes more mainstream and good on Bond for choosing such a young language that is not even version 1.0 yet. The problems I have found so far with Zig are the tooling, the documentation and community that seems pretty small. But nevertheless, I like it a lot, especially memory management and error handling. I'm rooting for Zig. Thank you for watching as always. Onjana, kamsahago, sana hamida. See you on the next one. Dame bayo. Bye bye.